We are on the real programming channel. My name is Andre. This is our 40th lesson. I greet you. We will talk about create individual pages for the photos. Let's go. First, create a new folder called HTML to hold these individual pages just below the My Pod folder. As you probably guessed, we have already created this folder for you in the book examples. Now we are going to create one HTML file for each photo. If the photo is called Seattle Video Media Pack, then let's call the HTML file Seattle Video Match Pack HTML. Just be consistent. In each HTML file, we'll have a heading that describes the photo. Followed by the photo. Here is uh, the HTML for the first Seattle photo. All uh, the other pages will follow the same format. Title for the page. This should describe the photo. Here is our ready baked CSS again, just to keep the page a consistent color. Here is we give the page a describe, uh, descriptive heading. Here is the image element that points it to the large Seattle video match pack photo. Let's uh, also give the image a descriptive alt uh, attribute. Notice that we need to use two dots and the relative paths because the HTML folder is a sublink uh, of the photos folder. So we have uh, to go up on folder and uh, then down into photos when user related links. Exercise. If you look in the HTML folder in the chapter examples files, you'll find all the single photo pages already there. Except one, the page for Seattle downtown check. Create a page called Seattle Downtown HTML and the HTML folder and test it out. Get this working before you move on. You will find the answer in the back on the chapter if you have any problems. So how do you make links out of images? Uh, you got your larger photos, your smaller thumbnails and even a set of HTML pages for displaying individual photos. Now you need to put it all together and get those thumbnails in index.html link to the pages in the HTML folder. But now, but how? To link an image, you put the image element inside and a element uh, like this. Here is even the image element for the Seattle downtown spec thumbnail, just as it is in uh, the index.html file. Here is the closing a tag. And here is an a opening tag just before the image element. The href is linked to the new HTML page for the photo Seattle downtown HTML, which is in the HTML directory. The image element is nested directly inside the a element. Once you place the image element into an a element, the browser treats the image as a clickable link. When you click the image, uh, the browser will retrieve the page in the here. Add the image links to index.html. Add uh, is the last step. You just need to wrap a elements around each thumbnail image element in your index.html file. Remember, the here uh, of each a element should link the, to the page containing the large version of the image in the HTML folder. Make sure that your links, thumbnails and pages all match uh, up correctly. Here is uh, the complete index.html file. Uh, all you need to do is add the HTML marketing gray. This is our code. For each thumbnail image, wrap an A element around it. Just be careful to get the right trap in each link. Add this A element to your index.html file. Save, load into your browser and check out my pod. There are no dumb questions. When we put an A element uh, around text, we get an underline. Uh, why don't we get something equivalent with uh, images? Actually, Internet Explorer puts a border around an image to show it is linked. Our browser uh, Safari doesn't do that. If your browser puts a border around 
or ally under your linked images and you don't like it hold on a few more chapters and you learn how to change uh, that with css also notice that when you pass your mouse over an image your cursor will change to indicate you can click on the linked image in most uh, cases your users will know an image is linked by context and uh, by the mouse cursor uh, even if there are no border can't we just link to the hpack image directory directly without all those uh, html pages i thought the browser was smart enough to display images by themselves you're right you could link directly to the image like this a crep is equal photos uh, slash seattle um, uh, downtown check three dots three dots uh, a element if you did that and uh, click it on the link the browser you uh, would uh, display the image by itself on a blank page in general thought linking uh, directly to an image is considered bad form because uh, you usually want to provide some context for the image uh, images you are displaying they may put the page is looking nervous so i think you should add a logo to the page that would add a great finishing touch great idea in fact we got a my pot logo all ready to go take another look in the folder chapter 5 my pot uh, of this this uh, video and uh, you will uh, find uh, a folder called logo in that folder you will find a file called my pod psd the point psd uh, means that the file has been saved in the photoshop format a common format for image edition fortware but photoshop format files are meant for processing digital images not for web pages so we'll have to do some work to get a web ready image from it many photo editing applications understand the psd files so even if you don't have photoshop elements follow along for the next few pages if your application can't open the psd file you will find the images from each step in the logo folder open uh, the my pod logo let's check out the uh, my pod logo open uh, up the file my pod psd in the chapter 5 my pod logo folder in photoshop elements you'll find the logo folder in the chapter 5 my pod folder if your photo editing, editing application won't open the file follow, follow along anyway the same principles apply for the other format as well a closer look nice logo it's got uh, some typography combined with two circles one gray and one white of visual, uh, visually uh, inspired by the click wheel controls uh, on the classic iPod. But what is that checkered pattern in the background? That's the way most photo edition applications show you areas that are transparent. Keep uh, all that in, in mind as we choose a graphic format for the logo. Uh, whenever you see this uh, checkered pattern, that indicates a uh, transparent area in the image what format should we use you already know that we have a couple of options in deciding how to save this image we could use JPEG, png or gif this logo uses only three colors text and some geometric sheets from what you learned about the two formats you probably learn toward png or gif either would be Fine, the PNG might be a slightly smaller file at the same quality, so we'll go with PNG and because we only have three colors, we'll be safe using PNG at uh, which allows only 256 colors. So using this format will reduce the file size even more. So go, go ahead and choose uh, the save for web option under the file menu and then uh, choose png8 in the format drop down you'll see we have a few more options let's take a look remember you use this pull down um, pull down menu to set the format we are going to set the format to png8 to save the log here's where photoshop elements shows you 
The number of colors being used to save the PNG is already set to the maximum for PNG 8 of 256 will leave it there. When you set the format to PNG, this transparency checkbox appears. By default is checked. Do we want a transparent background? Also not the mate option. This is related to transparency as you see in a sec. Try unchecking the transparency checkbox. You will see the PNG preview. Add the button change to a white background. To be transparent, transparent or not to be transparent? That is the question. The MyPoty logo is going to be placed on a light green background. So you might think the transparency is going to be a good thing, right? Well, let's compare how to logo looks using a few options in the Save for Web dialog. Here is the log save it in three different ways and display it on a web page with a green background. Without transparency, things look pretty bad. Uh, clearly, a white background isn't uh, going to work on a green web page. It might, however, work just fine on a white web page. Here's what uh, we get if we check transparency and say better, but what's that white hello around the letters in the logo? Logo, sorry. The hellos happen because the photo uh, editing uh, application creates a made to soften the text edges against the background color. When it did uh, that for this uh, logo, however, it assumed it was softening the edges against the uh, white background. Uh, now we're talking, this looks great. For this version, we told Photoshop elements to create the made around the text using a green background. How we'll show you next. Save the transparent PNG. You know you want a transparent PNG version of the logo. And we'll talk about this in the next lesson. And this is our fourth lesson over. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to my channel. Please uh, like, share with friends, comment, eat bananas, chocolate and nuts, drink more water for the effective work of our brains. Bye.